Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to work on an iron farm, so we no longer have to crawl through the caves to gather it. We have a big project ahead of us today, so let's get started. So thanks to one of our new residents at this base, we finally have better tools. I was able to get unbreaking on all of our stuff. I mean, well, minus the armor. That will come on another day though. But thankfully, we no longer have to worry about our tools shattering. Now, the other day when we were working on this villager house, we actually ran into a couple of issues. I mean, aside from the fact that these villagers were trying to escape the whole time, um, I had to put in these oak logs so they stopped trying to do that. I think eventually I'm just gonna have to build in a double entrance here so they can't really get out. And also uh, a villager or two may have escaped while there were children and somehow ended up in this boat. So now they're just kind of here. Yeah, there were a couple of hiccups along the way, but you know what? It's okay, we made it through. I mean, they're villagers. What do you expect, honestly? You just can't work on a project with them and expect things to go smoothly. Now, aside from all those villager shenanigans, we have another issue around this base, which is the fact that we keep running out of iron. And listen, as much as I feel a great sense of adventure running into these caves and searching for iron the good old fashioned way, I've also gotten pretty sick of it. I mean, look at me, there's an arrow sticking out of the back of my head. Do you know how much this actually hurts? A lot. That's why today I wanna to build an iron farm so I can safely collect iron from the comfort of my own home. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> that was impeccable timing. Well, now I'm feeling a little bit guilty that I'm gonna be throwing these guys into a pit of lava so I can collect their iron scrap. Such is the way of Minecraft. What the? Well, it looks like I may have created an unintentional iron farm in this villager house. Oh no. Yeah, I think with that, it's time we get started on our actual iron farm. So we've got all of our villager stuff over here, which means iron golems do naturally spawn. However, because there's so many villagers in different places around here, and especially because the ones behind us actually use their beds, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to build it in this vicinity. Now, I did some testing in a backup world to see if an iron farm would actually work at a different part of this base. And pretty much as long as you have at least three villagers trying to get to a bed while also being scared by a mob, the iron golems typically spawn. Now, I tested it out in this spot because it's a good flat open space. But also, I feel like an iron farm would kind of fit into the feel that we have going on with this farmland. I feel like we could slowly transform this area into a good mix of farming and industrial type builds. So pretty much our task at hand today is to bring some villagers all the way over here, which is kind of funny because the last episode we brought villagers from over that way into our village and now I'm kind of just carting them back. So it probably would have been beneficial for me to keep this rail system we had from the last episode. But hey, how was I to know? I just wanted this place looking nice and cleaned up again. All right, so the rail system is in place and ready to cart over the villagers whenever we need them. Now, before we do that, we need to pick out a spot as to where this iron farm is actually gonna go. So I think next to the sheep farm is a pretty good spot. Maybe so it's not directly in line with one another, we pull it back just a bit. Let's start this off by digging out a spot where the villagers and zombie are gonna go. So I'm using a tutorial to help me made by Voltrox. It's a really simple and easy iron farm. Honestly, this thing only takes like 15 minutes to put together. It's wild. I have used more complex designs in the past, and although they may technically give you more iron, honestly, I'm in a single player world and I usually end up with way more iron than I know what to do with with these farms. So this one works perfectly for me. I'll link the video in the description if any of you want to check it out. Now I did notice that iron golems tend to spawn on blocks that are lower than the farm on occasion, but we can easily fix that by spawn proofing with grass, carpet, moss, flowers, all of those things. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much for now. Now the spot for our villagers and our zombie are all good to go. Before we dig out the spot where the iron golems are gonna spawn, I'm just gonna get a hut ready for our villagers, just so we don't have to worry about them later. All right, this dirt hut is all ready to go. One of my better ones, if I do say so myself. And you know what? I must say it's pretty convenient these guys ended up in this boat. It all kind of worked out in the end, didn't it? 
All right, let's break this. I don't think they have any chance of getting out of here, so we're good to do that. Maybe get another rail here and boop. If one of you wants to get into that cart, that would be great. <gasps> no, not the cart. No. Okay, well, there goes that cart. Maybe I should probably block this off or something before I'm ready. Thankfully, we've got another one right here. Could you please kindly step into that cart? Sir, get in the cart. Why do you always make this so difficult? Okay, there we go. Perfect. Get out of the way, sir. Oh no, I'm probably gonna have to put you in a cart too, aren't I? He is like adamant. He knows that's the exit and he is unwilling to move. I think we can push this guy past this block. No, we can't. He is not on a rail because I took it away. All right, now we probably can. Okay, sir, go that way. There you go, sorry. Bumped your head a bit. Villager number two. You're up, buddy. Let's let's make this easy, okay? Let's make this easy. Oh my gosh, you were just like, you know what? If he's going, I'm going too. Bye, see you soon. Looking good. Oh, you got pushed out. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, don't go back. Don't go back. I can stop this. Let's just like widen this out a little bit just so there's more space for them all to hang out. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we got tons of space. Oh, stop it. Stop it. You are not going anywhere. All right, you have nowhere to go. I broke the rails, so you're stuck here for now. So we've got these two guys in here, which means all we need is a third villager, which should be relatively easy, I think. We just have to take one from the villager house instead. So this also gives us an opportunity to fix up this build a bit. I feel like a double door type situation will kind of help fix things. Oh no, there's a bed here. Maybe I'll have to get rid of this guy. I don't think that will really change things. Oh my gosh, they're already trying to go towards the door. Yeah, you can't get out of there, buddy. You can't get out. Oh my gosh, they're relentless. Okay, they're all going towards the door. Okay, well, what do you, what do you want out there? This did not go as planned. That's okay. So I have a trap door here. Now I have three villagers who apparently just want to leave one of you are coming with me today so in theory these double doors will work um it's just that i did not do things correctly because i was not anticipating the villagers just making a run for it it's fine it's fine okay we need one more in a cart who's it gonna be i think it's gonna be you buddy oh it was you you took the last place amazing lucky winner well i don't know if you're actually lucky you're basically gonna be living in a villager haunted house for the rest of your life where a zombie is gonna constantly be scaring you while you try to sleep i just don't think you're gonna enjoy this all right this is actually perfect timing because the sun is about to set and that is exactly what we need to happen in order for these villagers to get into the iron farm and make it work so i can trust you guys right if I break these, you're not gonna go anywhere? Seems like you're not. Seems like you're gonna go exactly where you need to be, which are those beds right there. I mean, we've got some time to kill. Should we tell some, like, scary stories or anything? No? Okay. Alright, I'll just hang out over here by myself. Well, one of them went to bed. What's wrong with you guys, huh? Oh, there we go. Okay. And what about you, dude? What about you? It's nighttime. You want to go to bed? Okay, perfect. So now all we need to do, break these beds and they should fall into this pit, which is so terrible. Oh, no, they're freaking out. Okay, they're going to bed. They're going to bed. It's fine. It's fine. But not for long because basically what I need to do now is I need to find a zombie and get it to go through here, which hopefully we can find. All right. Let me get the boat ready that the zombie needs to go in so he doesn't despawn. That's all good. And now we have the difficult task of finding a zombie without getting the attention of a creeper. There's a bunch over here, but there's also a bunch of creepers. Oh, that one's holding a shovel. That's perfect. All right, dude, get on over here. I should probably bring a bow out just in case. Just to ward off the other mobs so they don't hurt us. The square Minecraft stars have aligned and gifted us a zombie with a shovel. I love it. If you would kindly, kindly get into this. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Ow! Come on. You can do it. Get into that pit. What are you doing? Why are we doing like a weird little dance together? What if I go down with you? You know? Ow. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay, he's in here. He's in here. Oh, perfect. Okay. It worked. It worked. Oh, it's working. Okay, so an iron golem has spawned. That's a good thing. We don't have the pit set up yet that they actually should be spawning into. Them spawning here just means that the zombie villager setup is all good to go. Okay, I'm gonna head to bed really quickly just so we don't have to worry about other mobs crashing this party. 
All right, we have a fresh new morning, and I'm just going to do a quick little run around to see if there's any creepers that could potentially ruin all of our hard work. Oh, I see you, dude. I think we should be in the clear now. So we can start off by getting rid of this dirt hut. We no longer need it anymore. And let's, of course, patch that up so nothing falls onto the villagers. And I think we're ready to finish this thing. So from here, all we really need to do is dig out a hole that the iron golems are going to spawn into. Bro, I don't think you want to be in here. It's your choice, though. Sir, you're in the way. You're in the way. Trust me, this is not a place you want to be. I am going to have to get rid of this guy. Unfortunately, sorry. It's just a little bit too early and it's making my life difficult. Ow! There we go. See ya. Let's make sure this hopper works. Look at that. <laughs> We're getting iron out of it. It's perfect. It's amazing. It's working. Oh, there's another one. In retrospect, I probably should have built this pit before I actually put the villagers and zombie in. Because this thing is actually working too well, and it's constantly spawning these guys. But hey, I'd rather have this problem than have the thing not work at all. Alright, so the good news is this thing is working as it should. Now the only problem is I need some lava in there so the iron golems actually start burning to a crisp. Which, I don't have a lava farm yet, so we're gonna have to go find some. And off we go. Is this a sign that I may need a lava farm? Probably. Add that to the list. I think I saw some around here somewhere, like, a long time ago. <gasps> oh, is this the pit? It is! Yes, I remember I took obsidian from here. Amazing. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna grab, honestly, a couple buckets. Just to have spares. And we're good to go. All right, buddy. Um, since you're kind of like in the direct place that I need to place this lava, I don't want to risk it, so I'm sorry, dude. There we go. All right, now we can place this lava here. Basically, all of this stuff holds the lava in place. And if an iron golem would kindly spawn, that would be great. What's the matter? Do they not want to spawn here anymore? Oh, here we go. Okay, it's working. It's working. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can see how it functions. And you can also see how efficient it is. So that's basically it. We have our iron farm set up. And honestly, so far, it seems like the iron golems are not having trouble spawning in the area that they're intended to. Doesn't seem like we've had any issues. So I think we're pretty much good to go. If I notice anything while we're doing the actual build, we'll definitely spawn proof it. But I think we should be okay. So I guess now that the farm is in place and working properly, that means we can begin building around it. And covering this up so I don't feel incredibly guilty about this whole thing. Poor iron golems, man. They're just out here trying their best, trying to protect these villagers. And here I am being a menace. So how about we begin building and making this thing look nice so I can stop feeling guilty. So now we basically just have the task of figuring out what style we want to build this iron farm in. So I mentioned earlier that I want this area to start looking a little bit more industrial. And when I think industrial, I definitely think leaning more towards building with stones. Honestly, granite and diorite look really nice together. We combined those two before for the Fletcher build and it turned out really nice. So those are definitely two options. Next, I would definitely say to incorporate some spruce because it goes really well with these two. And finally, hmm, I'm trying to think what would look nice next to the red and the white. I'm almost wondering if oxidized copper would look good. All right, let's take a quick look at these outside in the daylight. Ooh, yeah, I really like this palette. There's a lot of color, contrast, textures going on, but each block also feels very light and airy, if that makes sense. I feel like they all complement each other really well. Plus, the stones and the copper give off that very industrial vibe that I'm going for. Well, we have our block palette picked out, so that's good. But the problem is, you can see, we're kind of lacking some of the copper we need. So we need to get some of this burned. And it looks like we're gonna need some more spruce and a little bit more diorite. Well, I guess that means into the caves we go. Haven't been to this section of the caves in a while, so I thought I'd check it out. And there's tons of diorite here, which is perfect. The slime wants to say hello. Well, oh, uh oh, ooh, slime. All right, I have about four stacks of diorite. I think that should be good. 
There's a couple more patches here I might grab along the way, but I'm also going to restock on granite because I find that we're always running out. All right, I feel like we are fully stocked on everything that we need here. Now let's get out of these caves. Since we're back at home, let's grab some of this copper so we can start turning it into blocks. We're gonna have to make sure we keep burning up copper because honestly, these blocks are quite expensive, but I think we're off to a good start. So let's begin bringing some of these materials over to where we're gonna be building. Oh no. Okay, we've got an iron golem spawning outside of the farm, which means we definitely are gonna have to spawn proof some of the stuff around here. That is okay though, although it looks like he definitely took a bit of a beating. What happened to you, sir? All right, let's start getting some of our materials in here so we're all organized and ready to go. And before we gather up the last bit of spruce we need, I'm just gonna start laying out some of these copper blocks just because I want them to begin oxidizing. This process can take a bit of time, so it's good to get a head start on it. Last but not least, let's gather up some of this spruce. I've just got to say, I chopped down three trees, got a ton of spruce, and look at my axe. It is still pretty much at full durability. I am so happy I finally got unbreaking. Not having to make constant trips to the skeleton farm has been so nice. All right, I think four stacks of spruce should be good for this build, so let's head back. So let's start things off by getting our beams in place. Now we actually need to be really careful when building around this iron farm because there is lava, which means some of our materials like the spruce can catch on fire. So we don't want that sitting too close to it. All right, so I've got some beams that cover pretty much the entirety of at least this portion of the farm. I don't really mind if the access to the iron itself is on the outside. Pretty much this thing is just going to be covering up the components of the farm rather than being a functional interior. So it's okay by me. Now I just want to get some more beams in place to give this structure, well, a little bit more structure. Right now we just have a really long rectangular shape and adding more beams not only gives it that visual structure I was talking about, it will also help break up pieces of the wall so it's not all the same. I also think I'm gonna pop in like a faux entrance over here as well. This extension will also give some shape to the rectangle that we have right now and it's gonna cover up the villagers that are underneath. Now, because this is such a large rectangular shape for a build, I feel like adding a second floor to it would probably benefit the shape, especially because we already have a couple builds in this area that sit a little bit lower and are very rectangular as well. So giving this one some height will definitely help set it apart from the rest. Okay, this shape is looking really good so far. So my idea in mind is to have a couple of roof lines going on right here, here, and then one spanning across behind those roofs. This spot right here, I kind of want to build inward and make it sort of a balcony. It might be a little hard to visualize right now because it's all just a bunch of floating beams. But if the vision that I have in my head right now all works out, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. To make this vision come to life a little bit more, let's start filling in the bottom walls with granite. Oh my gosh, he just kind of fell in there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, buddy. Oh no. The granite walls are in place and I think this is looking pretty good so far. Now my one thing with this wall is there's such a large stretch of beam here. I'm almost wondering if I should extend this one down as well. That means I'd have to get rid of this window though. I might give it a shot. Honestly, I think I prefer that. It was looking just a little bit too unbalanced without the beam coming all the way down. I think this looks a little bit more clean. I also decided to recess the walls in by one block just so I can add some cute little decorations on the outside like flowers and all of that stuff. Now the one thing I want to do before we close this off is I just want to make sure all of this is dirt path just so iron golems don't spawn inside here. I mean, it looks like it's working. All right, let's get started on filling in the top floor with some diorite.
All right, this is looking really good. Minus the fact that I said I was going to do a balcony here, but I just did a flush wall. I'm going to have to change that. But other than that, I really like the contrast between the granite and the diorite. I think they're looking really good together. And honestly, once that roof is in place, I think it is really going to pop. So I just need to fix up some of these mistakes I made and then we're good to go. There we go. That's the shape I was looking for. I think that looks so much better. It gives this build so much more depth. All right, with another piece of the puzzle put into place, I think you can all kind of see where we're going with this. And now all we really have to do to get the shape completely finished is put that roof in. And it looks like some of these blocks are done oxidizing, which is perfect. We can still put up some of the stuff that's not oxidized because eventually it will turn blue but it's nice to have most of it oxidized already so we can get a good picture of what it's gonna look like when it's done. So let's start on this roof by getting a spruce trim up. So the trim for the top part is all done and looking good. I went for more of like a dome shape, if that makes sense. I find this shape looks pretty industrial, especially if you put the right blocks on it. So now I just have to figure out what I'm going to put on this one and then we're good to go. I don't want to add too much height to it because I still want this structure visible. So I think I'll just mostly use slabs to keep it lower. Yeah, I'm thinking this shape for the front entrance is perfect. It's a little bit more low profile, so we're not covering up too much of this wall. All right, now all we have to do is put some of this copper up. I really like the look of the weathered copper. I think it'll just add a nice bit of texture to the roof. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over to the greenhouse really quickly so I can grab some wax and that way we can preserve this block in the state that it's in. Yoink. Well, I'm glad we're finally putting this build to good use. Smell you later, bees. Don't get into too much trouble. Ooh, look at that. I know we're not nearly done, but that shape is looking so good so far. It's fitting perfectly into this landscape. And now we can finally get started on this roof. So this is pretty much all filled in actually. Look at that. I'm just waiting on all of these pieces to oxidize so I can wax them. I want them to ideally be weathered like this one, but once they do that, we're all good to go. <gasps> Look at the base from this viewpoint. It's wild. I feel like this base has changed so much very suddenly. I mean, to be fair, the farmland project I think is what made the biggest change around here, but seeing all these buildings slowly pop up has just transformed the area completely. I'm pretty proud of how things are looking lately. So while we're waiting for the rest of this roof to oxidize, let's begin decorating this build. Now, I don't think I'm going to go too heavy on the decorations for this one. Since this is more of an industrial type build, I would imagine it would have less decorative items than, let's say, a house. The overall theme of this base is very cottage core, so I am still going to maintain some of those elements with like flowers and leaves. However, I don't think I'm going to go as heavy as I usually do. Basically, my whole approach for this one is going to be less is more. And let's hope I can stick to that because because I love spamming flowers and leaves. All right, and here is our iron farm all complete. I think this one might be a new favorite for the base. Now let's do a quick little walkthrough, shall we? So I did just a very simple set of stairs up to the farm and on the inside, I mean, there is a lot to be left desired. There is a giant hole in the ground and this is where the farm actually is. So a lot of this is dirt path just because it prevents the iron golems from spawning. I also added in a bunch of carpet up top with some torches because those are also other items that prevent iron golems from spawning up top. Oh, and as you can can see it's working as it should. Now this little hole in the ground is actually access into the area where we go collect our iron. And let's take a look to see how much we've gotten so far. Oh yeah, this thing is working. I mean, this build took me probably a couple days in total. So I would say for a couple Minecraft days, six-ish stacks is actually very good. Plus I did end up using some of these materials in my build. So not bad, not bad. Now, I mean, the entrance is totally hideous and stuff, but hey, it's all about the resources we are collecting along the way. Plus, I can just shut this door and nobody ever has to know. All right, now let's run through the rest of this build. 
Now, as I said before, I tried to go a little bit lighter on the decorations than I normally do, which basically just means I tried to add less things like shutters, planters on the front of windows, all of that stuff. Now, I did still maintain some flowers and stuff along the bottom. I just didn't go as heavily as I normally do. And I think having these little features is still important because at the end of the day, our base is very cottage core. So I wanted to make sure I pulled some of those elements back into the build. Plus, you know, I had to add these poppies here because they're related to the iron farm it just made sense but overall i still tried to leave it a little bit more industrial so i added in some iron trap doors iron bars and i just kept things a little bit more minimalist overall do you have any idea how hard it was for me to not add any slabs or trap doors along the side here for a trim i was fighting for my life but I still allowed myself to add a lean-to here, even though there's nothing underneath it. I just wanted a little bit more shape, okay? Nah, but for real, this build is looking really cool. I think it's a perfect mix of industrial with a little sprinkle of cottage core. And I think it kind of fits in perfectly within the landscape of this base. Hi! Now, I am going to leave you all with a cautionary piece of advice for this build. Now, when you're building an iron farm, ideally what you want to do is you actually want a pretty large radius of blocks that iron golems cannot spawn onto. So things such as moss carpet, grass, flowers, all of that stuff. Now for this build, because I was kind of like caring more about aesthetics, I let a little bit of that go. And although golems are still spawning within here, which I think something about having villagers very low underground helps with that, there is still a chance that a golem may spawn outside of the farm from time to time. Especially in a spot like this that's a little bit lower. Ideally, I should probably just change this to moss or something. But as I was saying, it's probably going to happen. I sacrificed a little bit of functionality for aesthetic. So I just want to let you all know in case you want to build something similar. If you want this thing to function flawlessly with no hiccups, just make sure you spawn proof it with dirt path, grass, carpet, all of that stuff. Unless you're okay with iron golems popping up from time to time, sometimes honestly they just wander away and another one will spawn in there. Other times you gotta give them a couple hits with a sword until they go away. But other than that, this thing is looking so, so good and I am super happy with it. I feel like it really fits in with the vibe of this base. And now that it's in place, I can really see what direction we could take this area of the base. There's so many other potential opportunities for industrial type builds. All right, everybody. Well, with that all done, I think that's it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed the shenanigans. I had so much fun building this. And I mean, most importantly, we also have a wild supply of iron now. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Bye!